All right. <coughs> so Ayush had uh, raised this question last time that uh, he was having a hard time visualizing the point view of a three dimensional line with respect to this what I would call virtual box. Right? So yesterday even I was having a hard time and I went back I was like mm, how would I do that. Uh, but then uh, I could figure a way out and maybe I will share that with you. Okay, so uh, hopefully things will become clear. In particular with regard to the distance that uh, we were taking uh, to get the point view. So this figure is clear to you right is it is it yes or no perfectly clear to whom is this uh, figure not clear wonderful. So projection in the horizontal plane on the horizontal plane projection on the vertical plane on the vertical plane these distances are essentially these distances ok. So, pretty much there right and if you figure the intersection of uh, the green and the blue line here and the green and the blue line here you have two vertices of a three dimensional line which is enclosed within a virtual box a virtual box right. Draw this plane that would contain this projection as well as this three dimensional line ok. Now, this step is critical project this plane forward in a manner that you are actually getting this guy along with this plane and this guy which is the image of this along with this plane ok. Get these two hinge lines ok and when you are drawing this hinge line with respect to the horizontal plane. So, this hinge line would be parallel over here ok. So, you would be essentially flipping that plane over in such a way that all these three planes lie on the same plane that is what the basic idea is ok. Now, <coughs> follow this carefully this is fine I have shifted this entire figure over there ok. Now, yesterday two of you came and I asked how you would be able to uh, locate the plane that would contain the point view of this three dimensional line and you know somebody was looking way up there like that all right. So, let me try to get that plane on this picture ok. So, the idea is that we are going to be looking on this line ok like so ok. So, perpendicular possibly to this plane. So, I draw two planes or rather I draw this plane parallel to this this plane here parallel to this ok and the back plane which is parallel to this plane which is containing the three dimensional line fine so far with me so far ok. It is a little messy. So, I would take away certain information that I do not need at this time ok. So, what I am left with is just the horizontal projection over here, the vertical projection over here and the respective planes ok. All right. Now, this view is probably not very comfortable for me to work with ok. So, what I will do is I will enclose this entire thingy within a cube and rotate the cube a little. Um, are you with me or you are? So, what I will do is I will essentially transfer all this information onto a cube and rotate the cube. So, what I will do is I will transfer this information, this information, this distance, this distance, this distance and this distance ok. Just carefully observe ok one more time this edge is now going to be one of the edges of the cube ok. I am going to be measuring the red distances and I am going to be placing this blue line on the horizontal surface. I am going to be measuring these green distances onto the vertical plane and then I am going to be having this red line ok at the end at the two ends of these green lines ok. Watch carefully ok. Now, it becomes a little easier for me to visualize the 
point view of this three dimensional line ok all right. Of course, for the point view I will have to be looking at this three dimensional line from here. So, I will have to draw a plane that would be that would be or I have to sketch a plane in such a manner that this guy over here is perpendicular to it right. Perhaps, this is what my plane is it will be an inclined plane ok. It would not be parallel to the vertical nor will it be parallel to horizontal it will be an inclined plane ok. And let me assume that I am going to be having a hinge line here for now that passes through one of the vertices of this red line ok. So, the idea is for me to flip this plane about this hinge line like this. Okay, let me try to capture the point view here. Follow this very carefully. But before I do that, I'll ask this question to you. Is this the actual three-dimensional line? Is this the image of that, right? Okay, so I should be considering the actual three-dimensional line. Okay, look at that figure over there. The black line is something that I'm interested in, not the red line. Okay, now for that. I am going to be using this distance, I am going to be using this distance and this is where my black line is ok. So, this plane black dash plane is going to be capturing the point view where over here is not it is not it right not there but here. Now, your question was how do I correlate these distances with this one now it is clear is it right. Now, that plane need not be passing through this vertex of the red line it can be anywhere so long as it is parallel to this plane ok. So, I can move this plane perpendicular to this line and along this line yeah once again it does not really matter where the location of that plane is. Now, what I would do is I would rotate that plane about that black hinge line like so and when I do that this guy would be coming where? clear now is it ok for you to correlate this distance with this distance clear yeah anybody else you are right for your consolation this is not good tea it does not taste very good anyhow ok. So, having understood this let me move forward. So, visualization is only one aspect of it ok. So, with practice the more you practice the more it becomes easier for you to follow this mechanically ok anyhow parallel lines given the projections of uh, a three dimensional line C D ok in the vertical and horizontal plane and you also have the projections of uh, a point A ok the vertical plane projection here the horizontal plane projection over here I am expected to draw a line that passes through A which is parallel to C D ok. How do I do this? How do I do this? I will have to visualize this line point view or true length I will have to figure out a plane in which this line is in true length yeah hinge line ok. This view is going to be I am not sure which one is going to become 
All right, so this view is going to be common because I'm using another hinge line. I'm going to be making an auxiliary plane, draw projections perpendicular to this hinge line, measure what distance is, measure this distance, transfer it over there, measure that distance, transfer it over there, and this is my line C1, D1 in auxiliary plane 1. Remember, I can use as many auxiliary planes as I, as I can or as I would want. So this is the first auxiliary plane. That's the reason why I'm using the subscript C1, D1. Okay, and this would be in true length. Great. So it's really nice to get the feedback from you. So this would be in true length. Okay, so now that I have located the plane, I have to do the same exercise to get the corresponding projection of A on that plane. How do I do that? I draw a projector perpendicular to this hinge line. From that point, I will measure this distance transferred over there. That is where my point A1 is. Okay? And then, I know that this line is in true length. So I can draw a line passing through A1 which is parallel to C1D1 of any length okay of any length right and this is let's say point b1 i take b1 back i'm going to be using the same rules now i'm going to be taking b1 back where do i locate that b1 over there Now, would this be in true length? A1, B1. Okay. So, if one of uh, if these lines are parallel, and if uh, one of uh, the lines is in true length, the other one has to be in true length. Okay. Now, how do I locate B1 in the uh, horizontal plane over there? How do I do that? I don't know the distances right now. I don't know the distance. But what I know is if this is in true length, its corresponding projection in the other view has to be parallel to the hinge line. It has to be parallel to the hinge line. Okay? Which is what I'm going to be using. So I'm going to be ensuring that this guy is in true length. I'm going to go up and I'm going to draw a line segment which is parallel to this hinge line. Okay, once I get that, now I can use the distances. Now, if I project this BH downward, okay, I can measure this distance and transfer it back over here, down. And there is the projection of AB in the frontal plane, on the vertical plane. Right? Right? Okay, so I have not mentioned AHBH, maybe I will mention that later. But if I want to see now the point views of these two lines, because both of these guys are in true lengths on this plane. So if I look at these two lines from here, I need to make a hinge line which is perpendicular to either one of these. Okay, get the projections from where am I going to be getting the distances? From there, because now this view is common between this guy and the view that I'm going to be making. Okay? So I'll get that distance transferred over there. I'll get that distance transferred over here. Ha. So far so good. Now what? Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So my mistake. But so nice, right? You guys realize that. So this guy should be here, right? Okay. So this distance should actually have been here, and that distance should actually have been here. Okay. So just flip these guys over, and essentially you're going to be getting this point view over here, this point view over here. So point view of CD, sorry, point view of AB will be here. 
point view of C D will be there, yeah. Okay. Next, perpendicular to a line from a point. You got the projections C D in the horizontal plane and vertical plane, and you also got the projection A V and A H in both planes. Okay, I'm I'm doing a dhoni here. So I'm I'm trying to make runs fast. Okay, hinge line. It would be a good idea for you to sketch um, alongside this lecture. Okay, give you uh, a nice practice, and hopefully you will be. So two things will happen. Number one, your eyes will not get heavy. Number two, you know, it'll be nice. I mean, you'll get some practice. Okay, <coughs> so I'll start with the hinge line. So remember whatever exercise I am doing with respect to this view I can do exactly the same thing starting from here nothing stops me okay. So I will draw a new hinge line parallel to CHDH here take the projections get this distance transferred over there get that distance transferred over there I get C1 D1 in true length wonderful and then I will do the same thing for A I will take projection which is perpendicular to this hinge line I will measure this distance transferred over there and I will get my A1 there ok ok alright. So the question is to figure out a perpendicular ok from point A in 3 D on to C 1 D 1 or C D the 3 dimensional line C D this is what the question is all right. So, at this time maybe I will just move forward I will get the I will try to get the point view of C 1 D 1 draw a hinge line perpendicular to this projection ok I hope I am not making that mistake again get that distance measure it over there this is my point view of C D ok and then likewise I will measure that distance ok draw a projector perpendicular to that hinge line from A and transfer over there this is my A 2. So, this is my first auxiliary plane that contains the true length of C D this is my second auxiliary plane that contains the point view of C D yeah ok. Now, Now, is it ok for me to draw a perpendicular from A 1 to C 1 D 1 and say that this would be perpendicular why not why not why not or why both questions. this would not be the actual length, but this would be perpendicular ok do you agree the plane in which this line is in true length ok I draw a perpendicular this will remain perpendicular ok, but this guy may not be in true length ok it is so on this auxiliary plane it is only the projection of this line that you see to get the true length I will probably have to go over there would this be in true length why is that because this guy is parallel to this hinge line if one of the projections is parallel to the hinge line the other projection will contain the true length quite mechanical now yeah. So, this would be in true length so you will have the perpendicular over here you will ensure that this guy is perpendicular and you will find the true length of this perpendicular from here get back you figure this point of intersection let us call this B 1 go back ok. Of course, B 1 has to lie on C D so you get B H come down 
okay of course b has to lie on cd so you get bp so this is your first or projection of your perpendicular in the horizontal plane and this is the projection of the same perpendicular in the vertical plane with me now better to understand lot easier to understand compared to previous lectures last part from where from where till this is fine till this is fine that would be in true length this is point b1 okay b1 has to lie on c1 d1 right come up and these projections they are going to be parallel to each other okay so the corresponding projection of b in the horizontal plane is going to be bh on ch dh come down the corresponding projection will be bb okay and you join just ah bh over there and ab bb over here no rocket science how's your galaxy going tarring okay anyhow so this is clear is this clear okay shortest distances between lines it's going to be a long day today so bear with me but uh, I, I really want you to understand this because uh, if you don't then uh, you'll have difficulties starting Monday okay so uh, it was important for us to have this class <clears throat> one look at this figure and you will realize that the points or the lines are intersecting or not they are not intersecting the reason why because you don't see the corresponding projection of the intersection in the horizontal plane over here okay so they cannot be intersecting okay they are skewed in space somewhere right all right same thing same thing a hinge line try to get the first auxiliary plane projectors perpendicular to that hinge line okay from everything a b c and d okay things might be a little messy so i want you guys to follow this carefully measure this distance transfer over there measure that distance transferred on the projection from where uh, on the on the projection emanating from dh over there so this is your c1 t1 okay and since this projection is parallel to this inch line this would be in true length okay do the same thing for the a's and b's take that distance transfer over here on the projection starting from a h take that distance transfer over there okay and you'd be getting a1 b1 okay this guy is in true length how about this guy not in true length fine now let me try to visualize these two lines from a plane from where I can see CD as a point okay get the point view of CD make a line or make a hinge perpendicular to CD okay draw this projector measure that distance transfer over there and this would give you the point view of CD okay draw two other projectors from a1 b1 perpendicular to this guy this inch line where are you going to be measuring the distances from here okay measure that distance transferred over here if you have not noticed let me emphasize that these distances are to be measured they are to be measured from the hinge lines okay it's critical okay not to be measured from the points but from the hinge lines every time okay all right so measure that distance this little one from this hinge line transfer over there and this is your a2 b2 so on the second auxiliary plane you see 
C D as a point, C D as a point, and you see the projection of A B. Okay, would A two B two be in true length? Good, not a problem. How do we find the shortest distance between lines? I draw perpendicular. Okay, right there, I draw perpendicular. Okay, all right. Is this going to be in true length? <laughs> Why do you say yes? It's perpendicular to? But you don't know, do you? As of now? Yeah, but, but would this plane or would this projection of the perpendicular give you the, give you the true length? Fine, fine. So you say yes, okay? You say yes, but I'll retrace my steps back and convince you that it is actually going to be in true length. For those who believe, great. But for those who do not believe that this is going to be in true length, I'll convince you that uh, this is going to be in true length, okay? At this time, I just pose a question: whether this is going to be in true length or not. Anyhow, so I track back. Okay, I call this point M2. I go back. M2 is going to be lying definitely on A to B2. Okay, so M will be part of AB in general everywhere on every plane. So this would be M1. Okay. If that is the shortest distance, if that is the shortest distance, it has to be perpendicular somewhere, right? Okay. All right. Now, since this guy is parallel to the hinge line, okay, why? Because this thing is perpendicular to CD. Shortest distance has to be perpendicular to to both both lines, right? Okay. Now you can just see that it is perpendicular to C1 D1, but we can verify later whether it's perpendicular to AB or not in some auxiliary plane. Anyhow, so once you verify that this is parallel to this, that would be in true length. Yeah? So all you need to do is name this intersection point as N1, okay? Get both M and N back. M lies on AB, N lies on CD, okay? On every plane, so this is MH, NH, MH, NH, and here, this point would be what? MV, NV. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, wait, let me let me complete this. Let me complete this. Till here, till here. Yeah, yeah. So till here. So ignore ignore this part of the red line. So it's gonna be till here. Yeah. So while justifying that the uh what the perpendicular and two length in the second auxiliary plane, so you assume that uh, the point N1 uh, lies on series says that M1 and is perpendicular to C1 Yeah. So why is that so? Why did we think M1 says that it is perpendicular to C1 The shortest distance is going to be perpendicular to both lines. Yeah, but uh, how often? Do you agree? Yes. The shortest distance is going to be perpendicular to both lines. Now, if you are seeing one of the lines in its true length, that shortest distance will be perpendicular to it. That is all. Yeah? If I draw this line, <coughs> so you're asking as to why did I draw this perpendicular to A to B2? Okay, I could have drawn it like this, but would that have been the shortest distance? 
I could have drawn that like this, but would that have been the shortest distance? This would be the shortest distance, and that's the only possibility. Uh, you mean to say that if there is a line which is the shortest distance, if we take its projection along any plane, it will remain the shortest? It has to. In reality, in three dimensions, if I have this line and if I have this line, if I'm going to be computing the shortest distance between these two guys, that line would be unique. That would not be changing. It's just that their projections will be different in different planes. Suppose that I have two lines. Step up. Do we have another pointer? Okay. Turn around. This is one of the lines in 3D. This would be the other line in 3D. Figure out the shortest distance. Uh, perpendicular to both. Sir. Perpendicular to the board. Yeah, yeah. Show that. Show that. Show that. Show that. Yeah. Now, what? What's your question? Sir, I am asking that. Suppose we have two lines. Okay. Yeah. One is the shortest one. Yeah. One is somewhat lengthier than that. Yeah. If I take the projection of both the lines uh -huh. along any plane, is it always true that the projection of the short, shortest line will always be shorter than the projection of the longer line? I mean, in two lines, definitely. <laughs> Not necessary. Not necessary. What? Have, have a seat, have a seat. But listen, 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 listen. So, this auxiliary plane is slightly different. In this auxiliary plane, you are seeing one line like this, okay, in the point view, and the other line or the projection of the other line somewhere, okay. How would you see the shortest distance? <coughs> Absolutely, which is what this is. Yeah, so that that plane is slightly different. But if you want to do this exercise, try to get a a b in its true length and figure out what this projection is going to be. Okay. Alternatively, alternatively, yeah. But but just 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 a moment before I. Alternatively, you know, I started by finding the point view of C D. Okay. Do the same exercise. Instead of making this hinge line, make a hinge line that's parallel to HBH. Get the point view of HBH, draw that shortest distance, and see really if the true lengths of the corresponding shortest distances are the same. You could do that, and you could verify. Yes. Yeah. Okay, can can you be a little silent because uh, otherwise it becomes a little difficult for me to hear. And can you be a little louder? So in C1, D1 and A1, D1. And slow down. So C1, D1 and A1, B1, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The shortest distance should be perpendicular to C1 D1. The line connecting the two lines. Yeah. The shortest distance line. Yeah. Perpendicular to the two lines line C1 D1. Okay. But in that way, uh, the second auxiliary plane. Yeah. Uh, that PL value, that shortest distance is definitely perpendicular to the point view of C1. Yeah. This is what I'm saying. L l let me let me try to understand what what you are asking. So you're saying step one, I drew a perpendicular from here to here, okay? Step two, I drew a perpendicular from here to here. Now let me counter ask a few questions, okay? Are you convinced with this step? <coughs> Not very much. It is true length because the shortest distance has to be perpendicular to both lines. Okay? Agree? If I am seeing one of the lines in its true length, that means that I have been able to capture that line on that corresponding auxiliary plane. 
the shortest distance will be perpendicular to it agreed do you agree with this then if you agree with this then okay then this guy is parallel to the sinh line okay because both of these are perpendicular to c1 d1 right okay now if i go from here to here the projection of any line segment which is parallel to one of the hinge lines okay the corresponding projection in the other view has to be in true length it has to be right Do you agree with that? Yes, that is so, if you agree with this, and if you agree with this, then your question is: This is the point view of CD. This is my line here. It could be anywhere. Okay. What is the shortest distance that you're going to be dropping from the point view of CD onto this? Got it? All right. Okay, coming forward, rather going forward. Enough of lines. Now into planes. given the projection of a plane <coughs> given the projection of a plane in the horizontal plane up there and the projection of the corresponding plane the vertical plane okay so these guys are the projections of plane of a plane okay a v b v c v down there a h b h c h up there look at the corresponding vertical projections they have to correlate so a with a a with a b with b and c with c okay the question is to find the edge view of the plane number 1 and to find the true shape of the plane if i can Okay. Can I have one of your Yeah. So imagine imagine that this guy is what you see over here on a triangle. Okay? And imagine that this guy is what you see over there. Okay? Now the edge view, so this is the this is the true plane for example. The edge view of the plane will be like this for you. Okay, the edge view of this plane will be like this, and if you flip, if you flip this plane over, if you flip this plane over, or rather, if you rotate that plane about this edge view, you'll be essentially getting the true shape. Right? Now the question is, how to find the edge view of this plane? Okay, and then I know that if I flip this plane over. by 90 degrees about that hinge i'll be getting the true shape fine now it might seem a little difficult but it's not very difficult as it seems okay now be very careful be very attentive and follow the following steps i start with the hinge line now what i do is something smart what i do is something smart i locate a point dh i locate a point dh on bh ch in such a way that ah dh is parallel to the hinge line okay that's the smarter thing that i have done the second thing well not very difficult i project dh down and get that corresponding point 
here on BBCV. Okay. Now this guy, if you just treat this guy as a line segment, it's parallel to the hinge line. Okay. Here, this would be in true length. Okay. Okay. And if I look at this plane, if I look at this plane, okay, in such a manner, or rather, let me let me uh, go back. Next step I would do is I would draw a hinge line perpendicular to this line, AV, DV, okay. So in the process, what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to find the point view of AV DV, okay. Project this line and measure distances, okay. So that distance will be transferred over here. This distance gets transferred over there. This distance, okay, from this hinge line to CH gets transferred over there, and this distance gets transferred over there. Okay, fine. This is what I've done. Something very simple. Something very mechanical. Okay, and then this is my first auxiliary plane. I join these three guys, these three points. Horizontal plane, vertical plane. That's the vertical plane, and that is uh, the first auxiliary plane, A1. Okay, DV comes now. Strangely, this is the point view of AVDV, and this is my CA1. Okay, this is my BA1, and here I would have D A 1 and A A 1. Okay, once again, this is my C A 1, this is my B A 1 and here I would have D A 1 and A A 1. Strangely, strangely I got all the four points on a plane onto a single line. Yeah? Yeah, I have done nothing special, I have done nothing special, all I have done is I have found a length, I have found an edge on the plane or a line segment on the plane true length, okay, and I have just viewed that corresponding projection of the plane perpendicular to this, that is all I have done, nothing else. So strangely, this entire plane is now represented in this auxiliary plane by this line segment. Is this the edge view of the plane? This is what we wanted. This is what we wanted, didn't we? I could do the same thing starting from the vertical plane. Okay, let me go over this real quick. Parallel line, project dv to dh, this would be in true length, make a hinge line perpendicular to ah dh, okay. shoot the projectors out from these vertices, okay. measure this distance transferred over there, measure this distance transferred along ch, measure this one transferred along bh, draw this line segment. Okay, this is the edge view of the plane. Okay, that is the horizontal plane, that's the auxiliary plane one. And again, you see that all these vertices lie on the line segment. Okay. Okay. All right. Now, if I draw a hinge line parallel to this edge view of the plane, okay, and try to see how this guy looks perpendicular to this edge view okay same thing shoot the projectors measure distances from where now from where from here okay this is between a1 and a2 hinge line 
measure that distance transferred over there measure this distance transferred over here somewhere now this distance is from here to a h okay measure this distance transferred over here this is the true shape of the plane that you will be getting. The beauty of this construction is nowhere am I using coordinate geometry, nowhere I am using mathematics, simple lines that is the beauty of it. Okay. All right. Can I go back to the previous example and get the true shape of the thing? Nah. Yeah. Real quick. Real quick. Okay. And can I try to compare these two shapes? No. Hey, half an hour more. I have to finish this lecture. Just two minutes. Okay, so I get this true shape from the previous example. Okay, I merge that true shape in such a way that one of the vertices coincide, then one of the edges coincide, and then I flip it. So both will expectedly give you the same shape. Now, I have to finish this lecture number one, but I will give you the freedom to you know go back and do whatever you want. So here are two proposals, proposal one we take a break for five minutes, you can wash your face, drink water and then decide whether you want to come back or go to your host room, but I will have to stay here, I will have to finish even if none of you are here. Okay? I think we are almost done, let, let me see how much, uh, let me see how much uh, I have. Line parallel to a plane, is it straightforward? Get the plane in the edge view, get the plane in the edge view draw a line parallel to it, I will quickly go, go through that, quickly go through that. See listen otherwise see if I do not finish this then you guys are going to be having a problem in, in the next week, I will not, you guys will be facing problems, okay? bear with me for 5 or 10 more minutes and then you guys are free, all right, horizontal line AH DH, stay with me, stay with me guys, you guys are what, I mean you guys are so young, huh? You guys are so young, I mean full of energy, come on. You know I so much wish that many of you guys come back and start teaching, okay? Teach as I teach, then you realize I mean what teaching is. <laughs> if not all, at least, at least 10 percent of you guys. All right, so this is dv, this is going to be in true length draw a hinge line perpendicular to AVDV, shoot the projections, okay, measure distances, transfer distances straight forward, this is not very difficult, this is the HV of the plane, okay, HV of the plane, get the points, not a problem, do the same thing for point PH, shoot a, shoot a projector perpendicular to this hinge line measure that distance, transfer over there, this is what P A 1 is, draw a line parallel to the H V of the plane, okay, any given length, let that point be Q A 1, trace it back. So if you assume that that is going to be in true length which is actually what is going to be true, okay, then this guy has to be parallel to that hinge line. Okay, get this point Q V, measure that distance, shoot that projector. 
ok transfer distance get q h this is what your line is ok. So, if you just look at this picture and this picture it is not at all clear if this line is parallel to the plane is it is it strange no, but only this view gives a clear picture yeah how did if this is in true length if this is in true length this has to be parallel to the hinge line basic golden rule yeah uh, p q should not change in t s view of a b c uh, let us see what this is all right. So, if I make the true shape of the plane ok and what am I doing here measuring the distance transferring over there measuring the distance transferring over there all right. So, what am I saying So, this length this length would remain the same is it over here and over here and the way and the only way this is going to be possible is if both these guys are parallel to the hinge line is it all right fine. So, all right. So, now same thing line perpendicular to a plane from a point <coughs> stay with me stay with me just about getting done hinge line A h d h parallel to the hinge line ok I get the true length I make the edge view of the plane shoot the projectors get distances transfer distances ok get the edge view of the plane stay with me mark these points ok I do the same thing with the point measure that distance transferred over there I get that point as P a 1 and if I want to draw a line perpendicular to a plane from a point this guy has to be perpendicular this point has to lie on the plane Q a 1 this should be in true length should this be in true length haha <laughs> you guys want to go back this ok if this is in true length then this would be parallel to the hinge line and make sure or know this very well that q the corresponding projection of q over here has to be lying on this plane ok. So, this is q v and measure that distance project q v up there transfer the this guy has to be lying within the plane this is q h and this is the line which is perpendicular to the plane in both horizontal and vertical planes ok all right uh, forget about that verification p q should be in point view wait 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 this is important p q should be in point view in the true shape of a b c would, would that be the case all right. So, if you get the true shape of the plane ok and if you get the corresponding projection of p q onto the true shape this would be the point it should be in the point view you know. So, when you are doing this always verify always have those little thingies that you can use to verify whether you have done something correct or not 